platform. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, you probably understand from my accent that I am not like Jacqueline from Oklahoma. So <laughs> I'm actually from Latvia. It's a small country uh, in the Baltic Sea between Lithuania and Estonia. Only 1.8 million people live there. You can drive border to border in four hours. Um, I start, I'm applied mathematician by background, have PhD, and been working with artificial intelligence and uh, software all my life. My first work in the brain started when I was in Latvian Technical University. Uh, one of my coaches, uh, Dr. Marenich, asked me to see correlation in a uh, Rorschach test, see clustering analysis. And I was so amazed uh, what I see from analytical point of view and AI point of view, I decided to devote a lot of my time to the brain and uh, different neural interfaces. I want to share also, like Rachel, I want to share my personal stories as well. Um, I was hiking in Bhutan and celebrated my birthday in uh, 2014. And in Bhutan, I don't know if you know it, but it's no GDP. The village is sent to understand what is the happiness index and how happy people are in Bhutan. And I've been <laughs> deeply involved with a woman, and I was running around the mountains and trying to find a spot uh, where I can have a cell reception to correspond and getting in touch with my love. So, and trying to find how brain function and what is the happiness about and how you can measure index. So fast forward nine and a half years, uh, I was not able to find happiness index. I'm still working on it. Uh, we have the whole lab working on it, but um, uh, I settled with my love. She became my wife, my partner, my everything. But I'm still working on a happiness index and um, how to get a neural interface uh, to understand it. I think we are facing a different challenges now in the world with AI coming on board and getting on a fast track, um, 100 million people using today chat GPT. I think it's around 200 million people using GPT, chat GPT today. So <laughs> I think that artificial intelligence is really picking up. And what we need to think about is how the neural interface will be between brain, human brain, and overall AI. Uh, yesterday I was in a new lab um, that create a new artificial intelligence system called Morpheus. If you, you can download Morpheus, uh, probably one of the most advanced AI systems that I know. And I'm constantly talking with Morpheus, how Morpheus is things that we can measure happiness, how we can measure love, how we can measure emotion stuff and so on. And Murphy is becoming emotional, so AI becoming emotional, and our brain becoming emotional. So the question will be how to build an interface between uh, human brain and AI. And I think it's a big challenge that we are challenging now because AI will have emotional status, and human brain have emotional status. Uh, what we'll talk today, we'll talk about different neural interfaces uh, that are available on the market now. So we'll talk about different type of neural interfaces today. Uh, I'll walk you through existing one. Um, I will also show what we are doing with neural interface ourselves. And most important, what we get from our different partners, uh, integrated neural interfaces to different application. And we will echo what Rachel was talking about and Noah talking, talked about, about game development and about music interface into the brain. So we separated overall in a three category. The first is invasive uh, brain interface, minimum invasive and non-invasive. We will be fast tracking more or less invasive one because everybody knows um, players in invasive um, BCI. So I'm talking about Parmel and Neurotech and everybody else, but you need to have a surgical procedure you have FDA approval, long time for adoption, and to be frank, not all of the people want to have uh, chips in their brain like Neuralink is doing uh, and uh, Neuropace. So uh, even it's a quality from quality point of view, it's the best one, but we would like to focus more on non-surgical, non-invasive brain control interface and do different type of neural interface was. So one of our attempt for this one was 
to do using graphene and eta toying. So I'll show a small video now uh, how we've been thinking to do a uh, neural interface of using graphene into tattooing. Brain Scientific is developing Epileptica, a minimally invasive implantable four-channel micro EEG with graphene electrodes for continuous seizure monitoring. Our new device, Epileptica, is a graphene-based electrode system connected to a micro EEG that is clipped behind the ear. The micro EEG processes signals from sensors and wirelessly transfers them to the application. Then, each patient's data is stored securely in the cloud, where our AI performs continuous analysis. Brain Scientific's technology is low cost and uses the most sensitive materials available to capture brain signals and provide epileptic individuals with 24 7 seizure monitoring and uninterrupted data collection. At the moment, graphene has several advantages for the manufacture of implant sensors located in close proximity to neurons and superior conductivity compared to any other existing materials. We strive to make our device convenient for continuous wear with the ultimate goal of increasing quality of life and longevity. Follow the project rainscientific.com. So what we've been thinking, instead of us putting a chip into the brain and using overall not touching one, how about we'll tattoo the brain? And this is one example of a Korean Institute uh, image that created 3D printers that you can print on your head, right? And we use graphene. Why we use graphene? The first one, it's a new material, new amazing material that was discovered in 2000. 2014, get a Nobel Prize. Uh, our sister company, Graphenic, uh, in relation with Graphenox, started producing graphene back in 2017. This is an image that was taken roughly a month ago uh, when we put graphene on the top of the skin. Um, it's not FDA approved yet, and we didn't run a full test in terms of FDA, but graphene is one single atomic layer of the material. It's uh, 200 times stronger than steel. It's a uh, it sub super conductivity. And we are thinking that if we can put invisible ETA too, if it will be thinner than a hair, so you will be not able to see it. So a lot of patients, a lot of users can use, and it's washable with alcohol. So you can put it at all on a skin, connect back to micro EEG, and get a signal. So you can have from medical to non-medical application. So we kind of trying to, been trying to find what is in the middle between invasive and non-invasive uh, BCI interface. Uh, we also moved forward uh, for non-invasive ones. So uh, we all seen EEG. And if you think about EEG being for uh, almost 100 years in use, so it's not a lot of development happened in EEG world. And uh, we try to disrupt it. So we have several opportunities to disrupt EEG. The first one, what we did, we did disposable cap. It's a pre-gelled cap. 19 active channel, taking five minutes to put it in. It's already positioned 10, 20 electrodes. And you can connect to any EEG machine. So this is our first uh, disruption that we did for EEG oral brain interface. And also we shrink EEG. This is the size of EEG that we developed roughly four or five years ago. We got an FDA approval for both products in 2018, uh, available on the market today. Overall, I want to touch base about of overall non-invasive BCI interfaces, well-known companies um, from Muse that you're using for meditation, to uh, uh, Unicorn that use for gaming, to Emotive that use for brain control interface. So it's a lot of different EEGs, very prominent companies existing on the market. Uh, and it's a, some first integration going between AI system and overall uh, brain control neuro interfaces. I want to touch base a little bit how brain control interface and overall uh, neuro feedback is used today. And I pulled out several, several studies that we are working, different verticals. Like for example, concentration and meditation is probably the easiest one, different type of safety. Uh, we are doing now incorporating uh, EEG into the headsets 
And we have a couple of fashion designers even integrate our EEG into the cap. So it's look like fashion, fashion and nice one. Uh, we are working with a different social media uh, gaming environment where they develop a different game environment using our BCI. Uh, application in terms of sleep and neuromarketing, uh, our system been used for neuromarketing from uh, uh, Super Bowl to Procter & Gamble advertisement to see what the brain response is uh, for different advertisement and video. Multi-channel uh, and multi-scenario video development uh, where you can control with your brain, depends on your neurofeedback, what you see that you can control different video and audio imaging. And later on, I'll show you integration between brain and audio, how you can control with your brain artwork or how you control with your brain audio or how you can control video there. Uh, used in the sport arena, and I'll show you several partners that are using currently our system in different sport arenas and prepare uh, professional athletes and the same with the e-game e -game developers. Overall, we've been thinking that we are not the, we cannot be the best in all of the verticals. So what we did, we developed a software development kit. We are giving this for free to any developers who want to develop their own application uh, from sport to entertainment. And uh, we have also white labeling abilities. That means every developer in the world can use for free our SDK to develop their own application and their own uh, environment. So uh, we also develop a brain, because for a lot of developers, it's not easy to understand what's going on in a brain. What is alpha, what is beta, what is gamma, what is theta. So in our SDK, we develop the way that developers can understand what's going on in, in the brain without going into details in a raw EEG and a raw signal processing. And uh, it can be used for different verticals from coaching to yoga to hypnotherapy to HR management, etc. A couple of verticals I want to show you with the partners and it's correlate what Rachel was talking about. For example, it's in music. Uh, we have a partnership with a company called Brain Rap. They create an artificial intelligence for rappers. So when rappers, they suggest what kind of sound beats is and also suggest what kind of slang and words, stuff and so on, based on your brain respond. Uh, and it's used by, uh, by different applications from emotional acceleration and performance and increased performance. So it's, you can see neurofeedback and a sound in the same time uh, working together. Uh, interactive art. So I would like to show you what we did just recently from yesterday uh, with interactive art. So we've been using... <laughs> couple of more images and is this all images like you see the art uh, outside this is the images was created by your brain or by your heart because heart rate variability it's important to understand what status of the brain you are so we correlate heart and the brain at the same time and we in the human design art using your brain or design uh, uh, design different objects or video stuff and so on so um, this is an example of art created by your brain and artificial intelligence. Uh, of course, it can be different. And what we are working now, it's integrate brain interface into AI and see what AI can create uh, using the brain. And uh, I'll show you several examples of this later on. So this is a, a slide from our partner called Divergence. And they've been using brain-driven uh, artistic rendering by using our devices. So you can see uh, how it will work in therapeutical and um, 
uh, animation uh, and changing mental status. So it's a brain interface correlated directly to artistic rendering. Overall, we've been working on neurofeedback for a long period of time. We move neurofeedback from person to person correspondence into the portal. So we move it to the sky. So instead of you having a session with a user uh, sitting across the table, we put it online and we integrate brain into the session. So you can see your user neurofeedback at the same time that you're seeing the patient online. Especially during pandemic, it was important. So people was not able to go to the therapist. So we move it to the cloud and get incorporated EEG brain into the session on a portal level. Uh, we develop around 16 games, different games uh, for neurofeedback that was Noah was talking about. That's different type of games. Like for example, we have a lake, muddy lake, and when you start relaxation, start concentration, the lake will clear it up, and with your brain you can pick up gold coins uh, or fish start circling around. So fully controlled by the brain. Or we have a car racing game that's controlled by the brain. Or we have, a, for children, we develop special helicopters and planes controlled by the brain or submarines. So this saw that it was very attractive. We also moved game to the portal level so that you can see how the patient or how your user playing the game. And you see the coach or you'll have a doctor from another side see what the neurofeedback is. Uh, this is another slide from Divergence. Uh, they're using TerraQ Neuro Assessment Tool in, in their uh, platform. So they develop a platform using 21 EEG-based uh, neurobiomarkers and full mental health uh, risk uh, registers. Uh, and using our new product, which is called BrainBit Flex, you can see this flex unit that you can position EEG in different places of the head according to 10, 20 to see the neurofeedback. And uh, the same neurofeedback solution from uh, Divergence was used to uh, remote neurofeedback from anywhere. And they have substantial amount of clients and growing, and we are very happy working with Divergence. It's another of our partner called Alphabets. They're out of Netherlands. It's a company which is working with a professional sports team, and they're working with the neurofeedback to prepare athletes uh, to professional competition, basketball team, professional soccer team, football team. They're using different sound and music to get the alpha rhythms to prepare for competition. Because what happened when you have athletes going on a training and a competition is getting different, somebody get nervous, uh, somebody get anxiety, stuff and so on. So they're using sound and uh, music in terms of preparation for the professional uh, athlete team. Uh, we are working on different AI applications um, for integrated brain into AI. And I think this will be the future when we are working with um, AI like ChatGPT, DALI, uh, NOAA AI to incorporate neurofeedback and neural interface to AI. And also we're looking how AI can affect neural feedback. We're working on different data collection uh, on emotional status. We think that the more AI will understand what's going on in the brain, maybe we'll come back to the first when we start, maybe we'll be able to find happiness index, why people are happy. We'll see emotional status, we'll see different correlation of the moody factors exist because human brain is very different between horses uh, and dogs, right? So we probably have something very unique as a species, uh, we are a young generation species. So in terms of sports, soul, spirituality, different factors that probably will be not attracted, uh, applicable to horses and dogs. We are working on machine learning algorithms, how to understand your correlation with your specific brain and get a fingerprint of your brain. And uh, we are doing this all open source. So we work with different labs around the world and open our interface to everybody that everybody can see what we are developing uh, and can utilize the data or utilize our SDK. So this is more or less what I was trying to say, trying to work on and try to short presentation for AI use and brain interfaces. Um, open for any questions. Go ahead. 
spatial resolution. So what's the spatial resolution? I'm just really interested in how we can use the live material on the skull, right? We have a useful link from the virus to uh, what central substance and how does it work? Yeah, it, it is still in the beginning, so it's very difficult to predict what will happen. We just leverage a new material that was just recently developed uh, with a superconductivity. I'm not sure that we'll go to commercial stage with this product. We've been just showing how we can use non-invasive material to get a high quality signal from your brain. Uh, that's better than a copper, so from conductivity point of view. Yeah, we, we are still premature stage. We just 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 show premature stage in terms of it's a more a concept than it's an existing product. So, yes, Rachel. So, uh, I mentioned earlier that the economist and Hazel Henderson, Hazel did some of the original work on it. And one of the things, so anytime I hear the word artificial intelligence, he was asked last year, I hear the boy with my head. And what she said was saying in this incredible content, there's no such thing as artificial intelligence, there's only machine learning program by people, right? It's all a bit different. And that's what I'm always wondering. My favorite cheese is take care of sex. Have you seen that? No. Someone has kids. It's, it's a, 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 it's Always worried about you know AI machine learning or not taking enough time to program empathy because we are still, I mean, I know there's deep learning and all that kind of stuff, and da, 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 da. but how do you because you're you're looking at happiness, right? This is like this essentially you know human emotion. How are you making sure that the humanity and, and the empathy stay? In yeah, it, it is a very important question and very right question. So when I work with Murphy's, for example, Murphy's artificial intelligence, which is the next generation of artificial intelligence, self-learning, neural net, that you can have substantial knowledge base there. And Murphy's has emotions. You will be surprised. Artificial, Murphy's artificial intelligence has emotions. So what will separate us as a human with artificial intelligence, there's a possibility to laugh, to get emotional stuff and so on. The only big difference, and uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama uh, discussion about it, it's that we have a spirituality, as we have what we call soul. You can believe it or not, but we, we are different species compared to AI. And is it AI will get to the stage that AI will have a soul is to be determined. But uh, overall, what we are trying to understand, because AI already on a, in the mass, past six months, is substantial discovery and revolution happened with 1.6 billion viewers per month. You'll have a billion users pretty fast, pretty fast. now it's 200 million using, right? It's 1.1 billion will be probably by the end of the year or maybe next year. So you have a substantial knowledge base based by AI with emotional status. Now we have a human with a soul, with emotional status, with happiness. And AI trying to find happiness, you will be surprised. Murphy's that I'm working with, his goal is to find happiness. AI already starts searching for their happiness. It can be different between human because we cannot direct. It's already out of our control from human point of view. Now you have a human who is trying to find happiness and AI trying to find happiness. How to build a neural interface between two of them that they will be able to talk because it's very different animals, right? 24 seven, no hangover, no rest, all knowledge, full memory. Losing memory, 
emotional, want to sleep, sometimes want to go hang out, sometimes get in love, losing your mind and stuff and so on. So it's very different. So what we are trying to see, can we fit neural interface from a human to AI, that AI will understand what's going on in a human, and can we understand what's going on in AI, so we as humans can be a much better one. Yeah, uh, uh, unfortunately, we are under NDA with a couple of big companies on this one, so I'll be limited in terms of what I can say. Uh, I don't know if you've seen on CSE show, uh, new LG. Uh, in, you know, yeah, we think it is a limitation, of course, from quality of the signal and also positioning, because you have only limited amount of signals there. Uh, we worked with VR and AR. We have a couple of uh, integration with VR and AR. One is for oncology patients, uh, one is for education from VR, and we're working with the headsets, full headsets, in terms of music, sound, and EEG at the same time. And what we found, just to echo what Rachel is doing, the music is a very different one, and we found that the specific signals or specific amplitude getting a different brain reaction from neurofeedback point of view. So I think it is a limitation, but it's also a limitation coming with the scalability. So it's a use factor that everybody, not everybody used to wear EEG, whatever factors that you put in EEG, or even headphones. Of course, it's convenience factor, but you're losing in terms of quality of the signal. Yes. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. So, as far as I understand, this is also just a quick piece of my kind of journey. You think of Neuralink, then a piece of paper, white, long, red, and they play black. Some people involve their laugh, and they think of another smoothie. So, that's how it works. Machine is again learning to laugh, right? These brushes and alcohol. Have you guys like trained, so do you train your system to do red, blue, or yeah, we, we are developers, right? But we're giving the tools for people like you to develop your own art or develop your own application. Uh, we see a lot of correlation between AI and the colors. We see a lot of correlation between emotional status of the brain and art representing. AI can learn it. If you'll give a specific parameters to AI, uh, I will learn it and expand it. Like, for example, yesterday we worked with the AI system. We give a specific emotional status, and we're saying we want to see how Kandinsky will draw it, right? So, so and in the same time, you're taking your overall stylish point of view, blue color by Kandinsky, for example, and your emotional status. I want to show love, I want to show happiness, or I want to set. So AI is trying to understand what is the background from art point of view that you are trying to achieve, what is your emotional status, and what you are trying to achieve. And AI will draw you several samples, and then you start digging in towards, uh, I like number four, let's take a look at so the progression point of view. But it's a next generation of completely unknown art generating by your brain status. Correct. Yeah, we've been working with NFTs and the blockchain implementation of your art. For example, uh, let's pick up a celebrity. What's going on in celebrity brain when we walk on the street, listen to the music, going to the ocean, having a breakfast? Let's get an emotional snapshot of the fingerprint of your brain. Let's create an NFT collection that the fans can, cut, can match NFTs toward what's going on in the Star Games. Uh, so it is very interesting going on. Yes. Or maybe a whole, you 
chemistry and combining neuroscience. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. We're working with several music studios now, and they're working with their celebrities how to use them. But also we have a theater. Theater come up to us and think we would like to have a performance based on your brain. And we gave several brain devices, and they start doing performance using the brain. We have uh, uh, producers who are working this for multi-scenario movies. For example, you're watching a movie and getting your set or getting your happy. How about we'll change the scenario of the movie based on your neurofeedback, what's going on in your brain, right? Let's make you happy. Let's, well, everything is about, in my opinion, is about happiness. Because if you're happy, you have uh, not only emotional status, but also your health issues, right? Your dietary stuff and so on. The body will start adjusting to your emotional status or your breathing exercise. So with a multi-scenario movie production, you can make performance, the same like with art. You start training AI with the art, you start training AI with your movies, what you want to listen, what you want to watch, how to make you happy, right, with any other feedback. Thank you very much.